like you ever felt. Are you listening? Hey YouTube, it's Piper and I'm back with another recap and review and I know you're probably thinking, wow, you are posting really consistently lately. Well, do not get excited because I don't know how that's all going to work out, but I'm trying really hard to be consistent. I put up a bonus video so you guys would have something extra that wasn't a recap and it wasn't a review, it was just something different. I know you're going to read the title and think something, but please watch it, like it, subscribe comment and share it please and take it as what it's meant to be with that being said let's get into the og roswell and the roswell new mexico recap okay and sorry if i look busted it's like literally midnight and i'm dying these lights are brutal they are really giving me <laughs> like heat flashes i feel like i'm going through premature menopause this is the recap for the OG Roswell and Roswell, New Mexico fourth episode. And tonight will be the fifth episode of Roswell. So I hope that you guys are all caught up. And if you're not caught up and you depend on these reviews to get caught up, here it goes. The fourth episode of Roswell was called Leaving Normal. The fourth episode of Roswell, New Mexico is called Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? <sighs> so many things wrong with that title, but... Before we get into that, let's take a look back at the OG Roswell and figure out where they were in their fourth episode of their season one. And in their fourth episode, we already know that Maria knows that Max, Isabel, and Michael are aliens, and Liz knows Liz and Maria are best friends. Liz's last name is Liz Parker, Maria DeLuca. They both work at the Crashdown Cafe, Liz Parker's parents own. And remember last episode, Maria and Isabel have finally found some common ground, and so they're able to coexist. And of course, this episode opens with narration as do most of the first season Roswell's episodes. And even though it's not the WB anymore, the CW kind of keeps with that. But it opens with Liz, of course, writing in her journal or diary. And she's writing about, you know, what is normal anyway. Liz is getting really excited over the fact that her grandma Claudia is coming to town. Her and Maria are very close to her grandma Claudia. And so they're super excited. Max and Liz are still trying to be friends that flirt like, or friends that have awkward chemistry. So Max comes into the crash down while Liz is working on a night where there's an orthodontist convention in town. And he's they have their little awkward sort of interaction, but you can tell there's so much chemistry there. Jason Burr and Sherry Appleby do a really good job at this romantic tension, this, this chemistry. They just authentically had it. And that was from, that was apparent very early on in their first season. Kyle's friends are at the crash down. They are sitting at the countertop, whereas Max is in a booth when he comes in. And so these orthodontists are like looking at Liz's overbite and they're like, that's a really nice overbite. I'm like, I wish my orthodontist would have thought that and then I wouldn't have spent like six years with braces. <laughs> But anyway, Max leaves the crash down and Kyle's friends, thinking that they're helping out Kyle, they jump Max and like beat him up. Well, of course, Max can heal himself, but he's not going to because that will just cause a lot of questions considering that everybody knows he got beat up. So Liz doesn't know this and Max just kind of uses that moment to reaffirm the fact that he should not be around Liz and that he should really just keep his distance no matter how much chemistry they have together. So then Liz's grandma Claudia comes and she has a great time. She even confides in her grandma Claudia that she's met a boy. Now I'm going to speed through this review just because not a lot happens. Grandma Claudia ends up having a medical emergency on a night that I believe Liz is out with Kyle. And she's out with Kyle again because, one, they're still in that real new dating stage and she hasn't really made herself clear whether or not they are boyfriend and girlfriend or if they're just friends. And when she's coming back home, Grandma Claudia is being rushed off to the hospital. It's discovered that Grandma Claudia has, I don't know if she had a stroke or what exactly happened with her, but I know that 
something happened. She's in a coma and not looking too good. And so Liz and her parents are at the hospital. And then Kyle, of course, comes and like is there, I guess, for what he believes is his girlfriend and to be there for moral support. But Liz is really sad because one, he's basically giving her the brush off again and now they're just more distant. And Grandma Claudia's in the hospital. So in a weak moment, she calls Max and leaves a message and it's like, you know, I know that we're not supposed to be talking or you don't think that's a good idea, but when something like this happens, you just want to reach out to the person you care about or the people you care about. Max hears that and he just can't even resist Liz. So then Isabel goes to the crash down. I don't really, I don't know if she walks into the crash down with her friends. Because remember, Isabel in the original iteration of Roswell is very popular. You know, Liz and Maria are just not on her same level. Level. they're not in the same click so Isabel was going to the movies or something with her friends they stopped out crash down and they realized that the crash down is super busy with this orthodontist convention and they need help but Liz and her family are at the hospital so they're short staff Maria appeals to Isabel's latent sense of decency and Isabel takes one for the team she, put, she dons the traditional crash down uniform and she works you know she decides to help them out because that's like the start of their friendship they can really see like it's budding into something more and Isabel's personality becomes a little bit more palatable so she's at home and she changes into her uniform and Max sees her and he's like uh hey and she's like yeah I'm gonna go help out and then she tells Max like hey did you know that Liz's grandma's in the hospital and Max is like yeah doesn't really explain it but you can tell he wants to be there but he's just thinking like to avoid all questions and kind of let things die he doesn't show up at the hospital but something gets to him and he decides to show up at the hospital and it's hilarious because every time Liz and Max are in the same room it's almost like they gravitate there's this magnetic sort of pull that not only are you supposed to feel as the viewer but it is expressed very well through the actor's natural like ability. Liz and Max are kind of staring at each other like she always does when Max walks into the room. They just have this intense stare like I see your soul. Like they are literally like pulling your soul. Liz see sees Max and she introduces him to the family and Kyle of course being the butt munch that he is is like uh why are you here and he's like yeah uh my cousin was in an accident which is a lie kyle doesn't buy it any more than i buy it which we all know it wasn't true so kyle ends up admitting to liz or at least apologizing to liz and saying that hey uh my friends thought they were doing me a solid they put hands on max and i just wanted to apologize liz gets really upset that that happened and i don't know if she's upset necessarily because that happened or more so that it's just annoying because she wishes max had the same claim on her that Kyle is taking. In my opinion, that's probably what it is. So she gets upset, rightfully so, and she just ends it with Kyle. And then she goes over to Max's house and she's like, you know, hey, I know you healed me when I was shot. Maybe you can do something for my grandma because, you know, it's not looking too good. And Max tells her, what was happening to you was unnatural. You were shot. There was a foreign body inside of you that was causing this. But what your grandma's going through is natural and I'm not God. And you can tell that Liz is just so upset, but she understands he's not God. He did something in the spur of the moment. He says he can't do it, but then he does show up later on and goes into the hospital room with Grandma Claudia, holds her hand, and he tries really hard, and he doesn't think anything happened. So he tells Liz, you know, hey, I'm really sorry I tried, and it failed. But then suddenly you see Grandma Claudia's conscience, or I guess her spirit, and she talks to Liz, and Liz sees it too. And I'm like, I didn't realize that Max was also kind of like a walkie-talkie. <laughs> he can like project people's whole essence and everybody can see it. I'm like, that's going to be off-putting. When did he learn he could do that? I'm hoping he just figured that out because it's kind of weird. So she talks to her Grandma Claudia. Grandma Claudia kind of tells her to follow her heart, which she had already told her before, but she approves of Max and obviously she's at peace. And then Grandma Claudia dies. Ultimately, it just kind of cements more for Liz and Max that they are bonded in such a very deep way. On to Roswell, New Mexico. If I look to the side, it's because I have notes over here. One thing that I am happy about in this fourth episode of Roswell, New Mexico is that the CW did away with narration. Liz does not narrate, nor does Max or anybody else at the beginning of this episode. And I'm like, thank God. I don't know if they're not good actors. I really don't. I'm trying to figure it out. Like, are they just bad actors? What is going on that makes me not as attached to them? Because like I said, I love Nathan Parsons. When he was on General Hospital, which is one of my favorite soap operas, I watched it 
all the time. I was so in awe of him as Ethan and even thought that he should be doing better things than just being on a soap opera. Then he was on the originals and he was also in the show True Blood. I just really liked Nathan Parsons and I believe that he's a really good actor. Just maybe this role is not for him. The other people who are in this show, Midas, Trevor St. John, and Michael Trevino. Heather Hemmings, I did see on the Wildcats, but that wasn't a show that was up my alley because I was far past a teenager when that show came on, so it didn't strike me as anything I wanted to invest in. So I don't know what it is about these people, these actors, they just don't meld. I mean, it only is the fourth episode. I really want to believe that if I give it some time, it will show me something more and I just got to be patient. I don't know. Like, it's just, something is not gelling. What do you think? Like I said, this episode is called Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Right at the beginning, we open, it opens with a flashback of Rosa and Liz. And Liz is talking to Rosa and she, I think Liz is going to homecoming or something. And so Liz is trying on dresses and Rosa makes a real offhand crack joke. <laughs> and I'm like, Okay, crack is funny. I thought crack was whack, but apparently it's hilarious. Rosa kind of gives us some insight into herself in this flashback, though, because she says that she really likes how Liz is not someone who can be swayed by her heart, and she's definitely more of a logical-minded person and less emotional mind, whereas Rosa is very emotional. And Rosa kind of floats the idea that she's seeing somebody that is basically playing with her heart. Liz apparently was going to homecoming with Kyle Valenti, which is Michael Trevino, but she says that she's not even sure about Kyle. And I'm like, even back then you weren't that into him. This is a sign. You should stop leading him on. <laughs> Dr. Kyle does not need that. Ugh. I'm just gonna be honest. There is a special effect because Michael and Isabel go to Max and see him in plain clothes for like once. He's always in his sheriff's uniform, so I was like, hey, he's in plain clothes. Michael and Isabel show up and he's like loading stuff into his truck and they're like, hey, what are you doing? Remember he had that Tharn Gully moment where he caused a power outage in the whole city? Well, he's now feeling bad about that, so he's like delivering water and things to people, emergency aid. And then like he tells Michael and Isabel about the fact that Liz told Kyle about him. She didn't tell Kyle about Michael and Isabel also being aliens. Michael gets upset and does this weird like special effect that like makes the, his truck kind of lift and I'm like that is so bad. How did the WB do better effects than the CW? I figured with time would be coming better effects, special effects, and they are horrible. Like to me, they just seem weird and they're very unexplained. The WB with the original Roswell explained out the gate what the basic idea of these aliens' powers were. Obviously, they grew and changed as seasons went on, but you get an idea so you're able to again connect with the characters. But in this one, you just don't have any clue. And now all of a sudden, Michael can kick dirt and it suddenly lifts the whole vehicle. I'm like, are you Superman or an alien? In the very uh, first episode, the pilot, there's this weird guy at the beginning. He's a radio disc jockey. He's just like planted himself in the crash down and he's reporting all sorts of kooky things. Well, Kooky Pants is back and then right at the beginning, he's standing kind of in front of the crash down giving some sort of tour or something. I don't know what he's doing. But I'm like, oh, Cookie Pants strikes again. He has, he's a weird character. I'm like, are they going to do something with him? Or is he supposed to be there? Because he's just making these weird appearances. I do love the crash down uniforms. Liz reaches out to one of Rosa's ex-dealers, I guess, who was also her boyfriend at one point in time. I think his name was Frederico. He comes and meets Liz at the crash down and she asks him, hey, on the day Rosa died, you know, it seemed like she was meeting somebody, that she was in love, she was dating someone. Did you guys get back together? And I'm like, Liz, you are very tactless, Liz. You are asking her ex-boyfriend that, who they were broke up when Rosa died. Now you're putting salt in the wound and he's clearly an ex-drug addict. You might be the catalyst to have him run back to crack. So I'm like, be more tactful, Liz. This show has no tact. None of them do. Everybody's just saying things that normal people wouldn't say. Then we have Deputy Freya. He meets or interfaces with Sergeant Maines, which is Alex's dad, who is played by Trevor St. John. And Trevor St. John played Todd for a while on one of my other favorite soap operas that has been canceled, One Life to Live. He played Todd Manning for a little bit when the original guy had a little break. He was really good as a villain, so I really like his acting in this. 
And Freya, or the chick that plays Freya, her name is Kim or Cam or whatever, we learn finally, after she's been banging Max for like a couple episodes, we finally learn her name and it's her last name is Cameron. So I believe it's Kim Cameron. I don't know. They change names and pronunciation all the time on this show. But in this episode, Isabel finally floats the idea to Max that now since Liz knows that her sister was killed by an alien, which we do have confirmed now that yes, she was killed by an alien, but we knew that from the episode where she looks at Rosa's autopsy and we see she had the handprint on her face. So we knew that, but this is just more confirmation. Well, Isabel is like, I can try to get into her mind, even though Max doesn't know she's already tried that once and couldn't scare Liz off. And then Max asks Isabel while she's sitting there with Michael, him and Michael, he asks her, how exactly do your powers work? And I'm like, you guys have been aliens this whole time. You rely on just each other and you never decided to mention, hey, by the way, this is how my powers work. i like, you never asked this whole time. You just never asked. What are you guys worried about? You don't even realize or know for sure what everybody can do. You have never asked. You guys are full-fledged adults. Nobody's ever asked about any more specifics on the powers you have. You've never seen her use them. What the heck? Because remember, Max had his roid rage fern gully moment, and so the power is out. Kyle's at the hospital talking to another doctor. There's a kid that's who they're worried is going to die. He needs a pacemaker. That's what this kid needs, I think. But she's like, we can't do it because the power outage, and we are working on a generator, and this can't be done on generator power and I'm thinking you guys have never heard of life flight or the helicopters or other hospitals you guys are just gonna let this kid die in your hospital what the heck get him medevac out of there or something why is he just there and he needs this surgery and you guys are like eh, nothing we can do he's gonna die you guys are not very devoted to this kid and I'm again wondering what kind of doctor is Kyle he was a PCP primary care physician for Liz one moment the next moment he's in the ER the next moment he's in the children's ward of a hospital I'm like what do you do what kind of doctor are you let's nail down what you do because right now you do a lot and I'm guessing you could also help with surgeries I don't understand what's going on here Kyle make it make sense to me then we have Liz talking to her dad and they're kind of going on and on about you know how Rosa had not opened up to him anymore and because since she got on drugs she was kind of quiet before she died so he learned not to trust Rosa anymore then out of nowhere Mr. Orteco has some sort of a seizure Liz is super worried so she rushes him to the hospital and I'm like dang what do I end a conversation dad mid-sentence seizure when they get to the hospital Kyle is like, don't worry, Liz, the computers are down because of the power being out, so we can't even log patients in. I'm like, there could be emergencies in this city. What the heck, Roswell? <laughs> like, you guys really count on the fact that nobody will get sick in your little town. So then he's like, so nobody's going to know that your dad's status is, you know, he's not legally in America. And I'm thinking to myself, you mean he's been undocumented all this time, which from the looks of it, at least Liz's whole entire life, and he has never once gotten sick, gotten any form of a boo-boo that needed some medical attention, like, ever? It was so unbelievable. I'm like, what about Liz? What happens when she gets sick? Nobody's ever had to go to the doctor. People have seen him, right? They all know he owns the crash down. What is going on? It doesn't make sense. The story is falling apart. Then we have Michael and Maria scene, finally. But don't worry, nothing's going to happen between them because we already know Michael is, you know, bang bang and Alex. Maria could be a blank slate for all he cares. They're just talking and he's obviously not her favorite person and so they have a little back and forth. She wants him to get Isabel to leave the bar but Isabel's trying to get into other people's heads to see if she can do that to other people since she had that weird experience when she tried to do it to Liz at the drive-in. Then we have Deputy Kim or Deputy Freya and Max have a conversation. He's like, yeah, I know you're kind of angry with me and she's like, why? Because you ran off in the middle of a handy and I'm like, whoa max must be an alien or a superhero he left in the middle of a handy most men would make her finish most guys would have been like wait 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 finish this up or they would have gone back i mean maybe he wouldn't have had his fern gully moment if he would have got his handy finished but anyway he's like liz is leaving anyway so basically she knows that she's a side piece and not what he really wants but she'll settle for it so because liz is leaving soon so she'll be the main one eventually even though his heart truly is with liz i'm like Deputy Freya has no self-esteem. <laughs> so then Deputy Freya ends up telling Max like, okay, yeah, you can make it up to me. I require at least three orgasms or something. And I was like, he can do that? He can control that? 
yeah, he must not be human because three. There are a lot of good men that can't even do one, so <laughs> I'm impressed. And let me backtrack a little bit because Deputy Freya and Alex Maine's dad do interface a little bit, and we find out that Deputy Freya was in the military, so of course they have this little bond. Which I'm thinking, though, aren't you old enough to be like her father? Because it seemed like there was some tension between them, but whatever. We're suspending disbelief. Remember I told you we're doing that a lot with this one. Maria and Isabel end up interfacing and we discover that Maria does not have great feelings for Isabel. She does not like her at all. Isabel for some reason decides that after all this time, 10 years since Rosa died, she's now like, hmm, I wonder why Maria doesn't like me. I'm like, she hasn't liked you since high school. How in the world did you not ever ask? You guys live in the same city. Maria owns the bar, or at least her family does, from what I can gather. So it's weird that she just never once was like, hey, uh, why'd you hate me in all this time? But suddenly now she has a wild hair up her butt. She really wants to know. So she gets into Maria's mind and we discover that Maria doesn't like her because she feels like Rosa was mad at Isabel for some reason the day or night or maybe close to when she died. And so Maria's more like solidarity. I hate who you hate, best friend, which is a good best friend trait, but it's weird because I'm like, dude, really? Like this never came up in 10 years? The Wild Pony is the bar that they're always at. And I'm like, you would have seen Maria a lot in 10 years. You guys didn't move. Why would you never ask her why she doesn't like you? So then Isabel gets into her mind, but then Isabel sort of passes out after words and has like a bloody nose from it. I'm like, is this what happens every time you use your powers? Because it didn't happen. When you did it to Liz, you just kind of threw up a little bit. And if this does happen regularly, how often are you using this power? But Michael, you know, shepherds her off to take care of her, probably with nail polish remover. And from what we get to see, he does offer her a swig of some nail polish remover. I'm like, we discover also that Maria is the bar psychic and she appears to have some real abilities because she's reading Isabel before Isabel gets into her mind and I'm like, okay. Maria is, yes, eccentric and her character has been painted as eccentric in both iterations of Roswell. So I'm guessing that's a very core personality trait. So Max goes to the hospital and what I think is weird is every time there's a show or anything where like two people don't like each other, even whether they be female or male, they won't like each other. And obviously Max and Kyle kind of have beef because they both want Liz, the same chick. So Max walks past the kid who needs the heart surgery room and he's like is that little whatever his name was because it doesn't matter I'm pretty sure we're not gonna see him again <laughs> and then Kyle is like yeah that's him and you know we can't even do a surgery because the power's out he's just upset that he's just expositing all over Max and I'm like why are you doing this and then Max in character fashion exposits all over Kyle and I'm like you guys don't like each other why would you go so far as to explain this much of yourselves to each other when I'm around somebody I don't like I explain nothing to them <laughs> like I just don't even treat them like they exist. So it's weird that they have this weird face off where they just tell each other everything they're thinking. And I'm like, okay, because that always happens. Whatever. Right after that conversation, and since Max has been feeling bad about the power outage, I knew what he was going to do. In my mind, I'm like, are you about to save this kid? How are you going to explain the handprint? Because as we know, in the OG Roswell, Max does do something like that in the second season for Christmas when he heals like all these kids in the Phoenix Hospital. But I was like, this is too close to the beginning for this to happen now. And it doesn't. Max goes down to wherever the power boxes are and he does some alien mumbo jumbo and the lights come on and the doctor and Kyle who conveniently are in the kid's room because the kid is like coding. They're like, now we can do the surgery. And Kyle in his head is like, yeah, thanks Max. And I'm like, this is so stupid. This is all very convenient. Then we learned something very interesting. Kyle's dad was also the sheriff. So I guess his mom became the sheriff after his dad died. And I'm like, you're just a family full of sheriffs and you're like the overachiever doctor. But we discovered that Jim Valenti, who is, I guess, passed away now, was in a relationship or something with Rosa as far as Liz is concerned. Rosa's ex-drug dealer came and dropped off a backpack that was Rosa's and I'm like you kept that for 10 years it looks like it just was dropped off there all her stuff is magically still in this bag and he gives it to Liz Liz finds a bus ticket and a note written by 
Rosa's admirer or secret admirer or secret lover. So she compares the handwriting to people in Rosa's yearbook and she discovers that for some reason Kyle's dad had written something to him for the yearbook and it's the same exact handwriting and Liz being Inspector Gadget or <laughs> she was like, oh, I've deduced these are the same people. Sheriff Jim Valenti was having an affair with Rosa. And because Liz does not know how to keep anything to herself so sh till she gets back, as soon as Kyle shows up at her house to help her dad back home from the hospital, because I guess her dad has pre-diabetes, so he comes into Liz's room and she's immediately just tells him, Dad was boffing my sister. And I'm like, Liz, I thought you were all about getting to the truth. You just go on assumptions left and right. It's just It didn't make me like her anymore when I heard this. I'm like, whatever. This is weird. This show seems so much like an episode of Vampire Diaries or the originals. It gives me that exact same vibe. And it's not because Michael Trevino is on the show. I don't know what it is. But I literally feel like I'm watching a later episode of the Vampire Diaries or the originals. It, I mean, it's like the same exact... I swear that never went off before I started this video. Instagram has it in for me whenever I'm filming. Anyway, Liz just ends up telling Kyle basically that she's too messed up to stay in Roswell. She's too messed up for a relationship. She's got all these emotions going through her. And Kyle, just like Deputy Freya, is kind of like, all right, cool, let's bang. What? Let's bang? <laughs> Okay, apparently everybody on this show suffers from low self-esteem and they don't believe that they should be the main choice. They are cool being the side choice. So he ends up banging Liz and I'm like, oh gosh. And so then because they accept the bang, Kyle's like, I'll look into stuff about my dad. If he was having some sort of torrid affair with your sister, then we'll find out. Liz seems so much more willing to believe Kyle and just go by faith on Kyle, but Max, nope. She saw into his soul and she's still like, yeah, I don't trust you. I'm like, okay, you have weird issues. The funny thing is though, is Liz is so tactless that after her and Kyle do a little boundary bower, she says to Kyle, you got better at that. I'm like, you are the queen of non-sweet words. <laughs> what guy wants to hear, hey, uh, you went from a D minus to a C minus in banging. Like, this is weird. It's very odd. He's like, well, you know, a whole bunch of anatomy classes and becoming a doctor helped me work out, you know, how to do it to a girl. He doesn't say it like that, but I'm just like, he might as well have. It's very awkward. I do like Liz's explanation to Kyle after they do it and she kind of explains her feelings after Rosa died and you really see Liz if her acting was better I would say we see her in a good light and it's not that Janine Mason who plays Liz is a bad actress per se I don't know if it's the lines or just you no know, chemistry I don't know what it is it was a good explanation and I really did feel that one scene though it was good and it also is setting up for this inevitable love triangle between Max and Kyle and Liz, obviously. I'm going to read this verbatim because I'm trying to make this video fast. So Liz, after she bangs Kyle, he's like feeling weird because they're still in her dad's house and everything. And he's like, oh, flashbacks from when I wasn't allowed in your room with the door closed. So he bounces. And then we have Max who walks into the crash down and Liz is down there making her dad some churro pancakes. Max walks in and she's like, we're closed. And he basically is like, I don't care. I can go anywhere I want to, whether you're open or closed. They have this little conversation and Liz is emotional. Max is emotional. The music that's basically the show their love, illustrates their love, comes on. And we're supposed to feel all of these feelings. I'm supposed to feel Twitter painted that they're finally together or in the same room or they're talking. Nathan Parsons is acting his butt off and he's got tears in his eyes and Janine Mason is acting her butt off and I feel nada. Nada, zip, zilch, nothing for either one of these characters. I feel no chemistry between them. I feel zero things to lead me to believe that these two people care about each other at all. There's just nothing pulling me towards them and I really believe they are using the idea that there used to be a Roswell and so people fell in love with Roswell, the original show, and even though this is supposed to be a reboot that stands on its own, it's never going to be because it seems like they are weighing heavily or leaning heavily on the idea that we already love these characters, so they're doing nothing to expand on character development or anything. They're just assuming, well, we love them so much, we can love them now. And I say this because if they were trying to make this show so separate, they wouldn't have named the characters the same name. It would have been in a Roswell universe, but maybe not these characters. 
teenagers and they would have still been teenagers and it would have started off there off of Melinda Metz's her book series was Roswell High that's what it was called they could have started there and basically redone the entire thing but they didn't they aged them I'm assuming to appeal to fans from the original and it just you just don't feel the connection you're supposed to feel with these characters in my opinion i could be wrong please share your opinion in the comments if you think differently then we see deputy freya and alex main's dad in the wild pony which is the bar that maria owns and apparently he's got some good dirt on freya and he's or D deputy freya which is deputy kim i should probably stop calling her deputy freya he basically blackmails her and says you know you scratch my back i'll scratch yours i want access to the sheriff's office office and you have some dirt on you from when you were in the military. Trevor St. John plays a very good villain. He was great at Todd even though he wasn't the original Todd which I think is the only reason why people just didn't feel him the same way but he's a very good villain in my opinion. Then we flash to Michael, Isabel, and Max. I don't know where they are but they're sitting outside at night and Max tells Michael and Isabel all about Liz knowing that an alien killed Rosa and now she won't stop until she figures out one and then we discover that Michael killed Rosa and I don't know if they had a love thing going or what could have possibly made that happen and then I'm pretty sure once we find out it's not like he straight up marked her it's probably something more convoluted than that but he's like you guys have lives here that are established. I'm still just a guy with scrap metal and nothing more. Liz wants a murder. I'm going to give her a murder and I'm just going to confess to killing her. And I'm like, even if you confess, you're an alien. What else is going to happen to you other than confessing to Liz? But why does it matter if you confess to Liz? <laughs> like, she's not a police officer. What is she going to do? The guy who is a police officer is also an alien. Nobody can help her. But he says, even though they promised never to talk about this again, he's going to just step forward. And Max and Isabel are like, no. Again, it's supposed to be an impactful moment. You know, Max and Isabel are discovering that, you know, this person who is a brother to them, basically, is going to confess to murder and let the chips fall where they may. We are all supposed to feel something. And in my heart, I'm just like, I could have had a V8. <laughs> If you remember those that saying, jot it down below. But you know what I'm saying? There's just like no chemistry, no character development. At this point, I'm like, okay, we could have Michael executed for all I care. <laughs> There's just no emotion and I need there to be that character development. So I'm not sure how much longer I can be attached to these characters or attached to this show on good faith when I don't see enough shining examples of good enough storytelling on its own and like i said i don't really care that it's a reboot i'm excited roswell is getting another chance and i really thought that they were going to capitalize on things that the first roswell got wrong or missed out on and again i love that they're using this multicultural cast i do like that they have incorporated some you know social issues but they they pull it off poorly so it doesn't work but they have incorporated them and i just don't feel that connection so i'm gonna wrap this up because one i'm super hot two i need to take off this makeup three i have been putting up videos left and right and like i always say like subscribe comment share press the bell so you get notified of any new uploads and remember to share this somehow so smoke signal morse code carrier pigeon telegraph food stamp two cans in a string, two plastic cups in a string. Just find some way to share this video and like, subscribe, comment. Keep everything going. Let me know if there's a show that you think that I should review or recap. I will be getting up these videos about the literature recaps and stuff, but that's just taking more time because these recaps take a lot out of me. Sorry that I look busted, but you know, it's late, late, late. And I will see you. Bye, peaches.